Hey there YouTube, uh, Petey Two Finger here and we're taking a look at this tweet, Mr. Bungle tweet a statement from Mike. Sorry to report that due to mental health reasons I cannot continue with the currently scheduled Faith No More Mr. Bungle dates. I have issues exaggerated by the pandemic that are challenging me right now. I don't feel I can give what I should at this point and I'm not going to give anything less than 100%. Sorry to the fans and hope I hope to make it up to you soon. The bands support me in this decision and we look forward to working through this in a healthy way. Imp impacted dates are a dozen Faith No More concert dates. Is that correct? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And two Mr. Bungle dates. And guess who had tickets? Um, we were supposed to see Mike Patton and Faith No More at the beginning of the COVID lockdown. We had tickets. The whole family was going to see Faith No More along with Corn, And I was stoked. I had been watching some uh, Corn live videos, and although I don't own any corn music, I never was a fan or listened to it. They were uh, they were always in the in the uh, media. Baby Baby Keem, okay, that's a great name. I I love rappers' names. That they're so. Um, the use of Gambino and Baby. And how how many different uh, uh, turns on the same thing we can have? Uh, it's, does that confuse you into thinking it's the same person or that it's good? It's good because it is ba a baby. Um, there will soon soon we'll we'll have Keem the illustrator or something. You know that's how it works in hip hop. As you. You steal an element and uh, add a T H A A, Keem the scuba diver, you know, and then he's good. So, uh, Faith No More, uh, <laughs> I've never seen him. I've never seen him. I remember when the Angel Dust Tour tickets went on sale, um, and I think we, it was that, like, we would just, gotten married or maybe the kid we just had a kid and I was like yeah I can't I can't really take the money and and be like I'm going to the Aragon ballroom uh, and I opted out and I mean I, I was such a huge fan of their first album I went and bought all the old stuff with Chuck Mosley and uh Like, why, why I've never seen this band is one of the great, great mysteries. Um, if you knew how much of a huge, a ridiculously devoted Mr. Bungle fan I was, how I did not stop listening to the California album. I, I listened to the self-titled album nonstop, and then finally when I when I was able to digest Disco Volante, um, I've listened to a real lot of this music in my life. And I completely understand uh, Patton wanting to cancel uh, I completely get that. I always had this in my head that he was a bit of a germaphobe, that he didn't like shaking people's hands. He did, just didn't like, like he's not a, a, a come here and let me hug you type of guy, which I'm like that too. I do not, I do not like people touching me. Keep your fucking distance. Stay three back feet back unless unless we're fighting. If you want to attack me, you're welcome to come into my physical space. Other than that, you have no business being right up on me. And I don't care if we're uh, related by blood. 
uh, I prefer that other human beings keep their distance. Now, on to the real, like, my comment on social media was, what a rat fuck of a day. Meaning that when I woke up, the first thing that I hear is my wife telling me that she was crying because Patton fucking pulled the plug on the gig. And we had, we like, we had just went through a whole night of trying to figure out parking and using Spot Hero for the first time and buying this parking spot. We spent 30 bucks to get a spot at the venue so we wouldn't have to walk. We were all, like, we last night I was watching live Bungle. I put it on and watched it. And then today I, I wake up and the first thing I hear is, Patton pulled the plug, there's no shows, and this is the second time. Like, there was another time Faith No More came around where the tickets sold out. They played some weird venue, some weird tiny venue. I want to say the Concord, but I'm not sure. The Concord Theater. And uh, we tried to get tickets. We were running two different Everyone theaters. was on two separate phone lines calling in, and it was just busy. And they sold out in three minutes. All the tickets were gone, and then there was all these tickets that were up on uh, that scalpers had bought them all. And they were $900 for a seat. The second thing that I found out today is that we lost Norm MacDonald to cancer at the age of 61. So, yeah, uh, I'm not sure, you know, everyone's t taste in humor is different, but among the people that I know, ev everyone felt that this guy was the funniest motherfucker out there. He really was. And uh, he will be missed. That sucks. That sucks so bad. How many of these SNL guys, uh, you know, fucking Mango is walking around, Jimmy Fallon. We've got all these people who aren't funny. But the guys, you know, Chevy Chase, he'll live to 193. But uh, the guys on that show that were really funny, they're all long gone. And we got uh, Mango. Uh, if you know about Chris Kattan and uh, <laughs> what Norm MacDonald had to say about him, uh, that he was gay, uh, and that Chris Kattan really didn't like Norm MacDonald because Norm MacDonald constantly called him out for being homosexual. Uh, <laughs> there's some story about Pam Anderson or some one of those women going to be on Saturday Night Live and Chris Kattan was excited that oh Pam Anderson's going to be on the show and Norm Macdonald would say well, why do you care you're gay <laughs> so uh, uh a bad day today is uh uh and i was just thinking it was like it was september 11th and i was like thinking oh gee nothing bad happened today everything is good well it turns out september 14th was a bad day not a good day a rat fuck of a day so yeah uh to end it on a lighter note this Brooklyn Vegan article, John Lydon continues to blast the Sex Pistols, his bandmates. I mean, financial ruin. John Lydon has been going on and on in the press about his wife, Nora, suffering from Alzheimer's, about how horrible his life has become. Apparently, he's broke. 
He's got no more savings, no loans, no pensions. I've got nothing. I'm practically close to zero. Um, but he owns California homes in Venice and Malibu. So he's got multiple homes. All I've got at the age of 65 is a chance to start again. Leiden maintains that he was not aware of this mini-series in pre-production until right before it was announced. So this is a uh, FX network which was owned by Walt Disney. And Johnny Rotten is upset because the Sex Pistols may have become the property of Mickey Mouse. Money talks and Johnny Rotten takes a walk. So he is currently doing a book tour on the UK for his 2020 release. I could be wrong, I could be right. I read a book that Johnny Lydon wrote. Uh, no Dogs, No Blacks, No Irish was the name of the book. And it told of his uh, rat infested upbringing where he was constantly uh, eating rats, being gnawed, rats nibbling at his toes, uh, dysentery, all kinds of horrific childhood fungus and diseases uh, by via his rat infested childhood upbringing by his rat mother and father where he ended up uh, with some type of really serious uh, infectious disease where he was tripping balls for many years he was in a state of fever and uh, bedridden and it really kind of shed a little light on why he like doesn't trust anybody doesn't like he's kind of his own thing and he really speaks his mind is because at a very young age he went through this very difficult experience where he he was came came to understand that he was alone that his parents didn't care no one cared about him he was the only one and he had to take care of himself so reading that book it, it helped to really for me to understand why the guy acts out and kind of is how he is um, that being said you know i really don't know much about the post sex pistols that pill stuff i know i've heard some of that music and some of it is really everything i've heard from those guys it just sounds great uh re really good stuff i know he is always working with different people it seemed i don't don't know the history of that music but apparently that music had quite a bit more of an influence than uh everyday music aficionados uh, would be aware of you know certainly an interesting person I mean uh, take him or leave him love him or hate him Johnny Lydon certainly did leave his his uh, footprints what don't you hate that when they remove a video did this just happen this video just got got uh deleted so yeah i gotta say i'm sorry about the uh video with no audio yesterday um i'm i'm gonna be making a pair this is a second video uh that i'm uploading today And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things, it's like, I, I had decided that I wasn't willing to pay 160 bucks for both of us to go and see this Mr. Bungle show. My daughter had bought tickets and decided that they weren't going to go because she didn't know they were only playing the Raging Wrath of the Easter Bunny, which she doesn't care for. She likes the California album. 
she likes the stuff on uh, the the first th three Mr. Bungle albums. She doesn't like this uh, well, heavy, not familiar with it. heavy metal yeah. stuff. Yeah. My daughter doesn't like it. Right. And I believe her uh, also, you know, that it's this COVID thing where she doesn't want to put herself at risk. She's got a, an infant. So she gave the tickets to us. And it had just kind of sunk in that, like, we are going. Like, this is, this is, like, all I've been thinking about. It's like, it's coming up. It's the 14th. The show is the 17th. It's like just in a couple of days. And it was canceled. So here's to hoping that Patton sticks to his word and they will make it up to us. Um, ideally... I mean, did they refund the money on the tickets? They are going to refund the money, yes. Yeah. So, there, there goes that. <laughs> what a rat fuck of a day, indeed. And R.I.P. Norm. That sucks. All right, you guys, take care of yourselves, and peace.